Let's talk about scripting. In the last two videos, we talked a lot about the actual interface of Unreal, where to find things, how things work. Today, we're going to get into the actual thing that makes a game a game, that being the functionality. So, as you might recall, in the last video, we added this camera and these coins, but neither of them at the moment have functionality. And that is exactly what we're going to be taking care of today. So, first things first, if you recall, up here we can open the level blueprint, and that is where we set the view target with blend, with the event begin play event. That was a little sneak peek into scripting we talked about last episode. Today we're going to be talking about a different event, that being event tick. This is an event that will automatically run every frame of the game. So if the game runs at 60 FPS, this event will run 60 times per second. This means that if you make things happen in event tick, they will happen faster or slower depending on the frame rate of a game speeding up or slowing down. For now though, we're going to just use it to move the camera actor, which we made a reference to last episode. We can just copy paste that along with how the player moves. We can get player character which is an object reference to whatever character the player is controlling. Important here, remember the things we talked about last time with actors, pawns and characters? This can only be a character. If it's just a pawn or just an actor, this is not going to work. Dragging up this player character, we can get the world location of the capsule component. And then if we right click on this yellow pin, we can split the structure pin into an X, a Y and a Z value. We don't want it to be exactly at the same location as the player character. We just want it to move along some of the same axes. Now, dragging off the camera actor, we can set the world location of the camera component. But now how do we decide where to put a camera? Because we want to have the camera move along with the player. So we have the player location, we have the camera location, but we can't just plug this into here because at that point it would just be at the exact same spot as the player and you wouldn't be able to see anything. So you want a offset between the player character and the camera. To do this, we're going to make use of a variable. A variable is like a little box in which you can put some information and then the game can point to that box and just say, use whatever information is in that box and you can change that information around. So instead of saying one plus one equals two, you could say variable A plus variable B equals variable C. And then you could just by default say A and B are both equal to one, and you'll just still have one plus one equals two. But now say in a slightly different situation, you want to add four and six. Instead of making an entirely new calculation there, you can just use those variables, change the value of them, and the same calculation can happen again. Now, we're going to do something similar, but instead of just adding two numbers together, we're going to use that to add two vectors together. A vector, is a variable that holds three pieces of information, an X value, a Y value, and a Z value. There's a couple of variable types that you'll end up using a lot. So let's go over those real quick. We have Boolean variables. These can hold information that's just yes or no. These are very useful if the computer needs to run one piece of code if one condition is true and another piece of code if another condition is true, or to track if a player has a certain key picked up, for instance. Then there's integers. These are whole numbers. So I think one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc. There's not much more to it than that. Things like your score will probably be stored inside of an integer. After the integer, we have the float variable. Floats are much like integers, but they have compatibility with decimal places. So you're not just limited to using one, two, three, four, five, six. You can say 1.4 or 1.6 or 2.8 or 6.7 or whatever you want. And you're not just limited to one decimal place either. You can go very, very precise with these. A string variable holds some text. Think things like a player name, maybe, that the player can input, or the name of an item, something like that. Finally, we get to the vector variable. A vector variable can be thought of as three floats stored in a single variable. You've got an X value, a Y value, 
and a Z value. Things like three dimensional position are stored in vector variables because you need an X position, a Y position and a Z position to know where a certain object is. The same thing goes for rotation. You need a X rotation, a Y rotation and a Z rotation to know exactly how a object is rotated. So with that explanation out of the way, let's make our first vector variable. We can go over in this menu over here, press the little plus button with variable and we get a new variable. We can call whatever we want. And since this is going to be the offset between the character and the camera, we'll call it camera delta location. Right now though, this is a Boolean. And if you paid attention to the explanation I just gave, that's not going to store the kind of information that we need. So coming over to the right side of the screen here, we can go down in variable type and we can set it to being a vector. Now, if we compile this, we can see the default value has three fields, a X value, a Y value, and a Z value. If we hold Alt while dragging this into the event graph, we'll get a node which we can use to set the value of this variable. Now, let's copy over the player character and the camera actor. You can select multiple nodes by holding Shift while selecting them. Paste them over here, and again, get world location for the capsule components and for the camera actor we'll also get the world location for the camera components now if we drag off the get world location for the camera and we just type in minus we get a subtract operator so now we can subtract another vector from this world location so if we subtract the player character's position from the camera actor position we'll know the offset between these two actors we can then plug that into this node over here, the camera delta. And if we connect it up to set view target with blend, which is connected up to the event begin play, at event begin play, this variable will now be given its proper value. So what will happen is we'll start up the game, we'll set the view target with blend, and then this variable will get set. Now, you're going to want to make things a little bit more readable because obviously uh, working with nodes, things can get very spaghetti-like very, very quickly. So do be aware that things need to be somewhat readable because if you're going to come back to this in like a month, you're not going to be able to tell whatever is going on if you don't make things a little bit more clear to read. So just order your nodes some way like this so that you can actually read what's going on. Now, back in the event tick, we can drag in the camera data location while holding control to get a reference to it. Before we used alt to get a node that would set its value, if you hold control, you will get a node that will get the value. We can then drag off this and type in a plus. We'll get a add operator, which is very similar to the subtraction we just did here. And if we go back to the example map here, we only really care about the up direction and this green direction over here. The up direction, the blue, is Z, and the green direction is always Y. So we don't really care about the X direction at all because we're playing in 2D. So just like we did with this node over here, we can right-click this and split structure pin, X value and the Z value into the X and Z respectively. Let's move around these nodes a little bit so that they're easier to read. And then we can use the output of that to set a new world location. And that we will do every game tick. So what's happening every game tick is we're getting the Y and the Z location for the player, which is the side to side and the up and down directions. We're adding the camera data location, which is the camera offset, to that. And then we're using that to set it at that new location so that if we now go into the third person example map, you will see that the camera is now following us along. And even if we jump, the camera also goes up. But going towards and away from the camera, which is something that we're gonna need to get rid of soon anyway, uh, the camera doesn't actually follow us because we didn't hook up the X value there. Now, let's add something a little more functionality here, because we also got some coins that aren't doing anything. So if we go into the outliner here on the right hand side, we see these coins and we can add its coin. We can also press Ctrl and space and find the coin blueprint in our content form. So let's open up the coin blueprint here and we'll see a couple of events again. Event begin play, which runs at the start of the game. 
we've got event which we just talked about which runs every single frame neither of those we care about at the moment so we're going to delete those and we've also got event actor begin overlap which sounds a lot more intimidating but it really isn't all this does is it checks whether or not a actor is overlapping with this actor so the player character is an actor which could overlap with this coin the moment something overlaps with it this event is triggered there's one issue though because we're never going to actually overlap since this thing is solid and overlapping means that being inside of the actor luckily there is a very easy fix for that we can add a component and uh, just add a sphere collision and if we go back to the viewport here we can now see there's a sphere around the coin we can scale it up or down depending on what we need now when we enter this sphere this event will trigger a very useful node to have is the print string node this is something that you use for debugging a lot and we're using it here to show you that now we do have a uh, overlap event so whenever i start touching it look at the top left of the screen there will be a blue hello appearing and there we go it's a blue hello but if we now delete the sphere again we don't have a collision uh, sphere anymore there's nothing to overlap because we only have a collision which getting a little technical here is called a hit there's also an event for that but in general for picking up things for most things that you're going to do you're going to want to use overlap events and not hit events because hit events have a lot more data associated with them and are as such a little less optimized so I've added the sphere back in and now we're going to need to make some things happen. We have our third person character blueprint, which is the character that we've been playing as. So let's open that one up as well. This has uh, all of the input information in it, as well as uh, the camera here, which we can actually just delete because we're not going to use that camera ever which also means we can delete the camera input for the mouse because that's not going to be relevant either. And we don't need the move left or right either. That might seem counterintuitive because we're only going to be moving left and right, but this is talking from the perspective of the actor itself. And moving left and right would mean moving towards or away from a camera. So we can delete that as well. And this is more camera input, so we can delete that as well. And that leaves us with only the jumping and the walking back and forward. So now that we have that cleaned up, let's talk about a score system. So just like we did before, we're going to make a variable and we're going to call this variable score. This variable is going to be an integer. Remember, integers are whole numbers for a score variable. We don't really need decimal places, so it's better to use integers. And we're going to compile and save this. But now how do we change this score variable from the coin? Because if we go to the coin, it's it's not there, right? We, we don't have the score variable anymore. Well, at actor begin overlap, which is what happens when we run into the coin, we're going to uh, cast. And casting is a way to either read or write information to another actor. So we're going to cast to third person character which is the blueprint we just talked about but we need an object reference for that because this is only casting to the blueprint which is what it sounds like it's the blueprint it's not the actual object within the world it's only the instructions to make that object so we're casting to a certain type of object but not an object specifically and in the case for a player character that might sound a bit weird like okay but there's only going to be one player character. But you can cast to any blueprint in the game. Imagine we do it the other way around, right? We run into a coin and we want to tell something to that coin, maybe to change color or something like that. The game needs to know which specific coin we're talking about. If we're just casting to blueprint coin, that could be any coin in the entire level. So you need an object reference. Luckily, the object reference we can just get from other actor. This has two functions. Number one, it functions as the object reference, but this also works as a check whether or not the thing running into the coin is actually the player we want to check for. Because if it's not, the cast will fail and whatever we hook up to this bottom pin will happen. But if it is the player character, any code that we hook up into the top pin will happen. We can drag over this blue pin over here and we can get the score variable 
Say, now that we have the score variable from this blueprint inside of the coin, we can actually do something with it. So if we drag off that and we just type plus plus, we'll get an increment int. This just simply adds one to whatever integer we put into it. So now when we run into a coin, we will get one score point, but we, number one, can't see that. And number two, the coins won't disappear. Luckily, making the coins disappear is actually really easy. We can just drag over this and uh, type in destroy, and we get a destroy actor node. If you don't hook anything up into it, you can see it has the reference for self. So now, when something walks into this actor, it will cast to the third person character. If that cast is successful, it will get the score variable in that character, incremented by one, and then destroy the coin itself. So we can check that, and as you can see, it works. What you can't see, however, is the score. So remember what we did before with the print string. For the time being, we're going to keep it at that. In a later tutorial, we'll talk about making a UI and displaying the score and maybe even something like player health. So we can just print a string and we can put anything into this print string we want. You might say, but this is a teal turquoise blue color and this is, this is pink. That doesn't make any sense. Luckily, Unreal is very nice to us and will automatically put a conversion node in between. So now every time this runs, we will see the score on the top left corner here increase. So now we have one, we have two, three, four, five, and six. And that's been the basic introduction to scripting and variables in the Unreal Engine. It's a lot to wrap your head around at first, especially the whole casting thing. It took me a little while to realize really what was going on there. I encourage you to, with the information you got in this video, before moving on to the next one, try making something on your own. Something that decreases the health of your player character when it comes in contact with it. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about the UI and how to use these variables inside of a overlay for your screen to actually see what's going on and actually let the player know what their health and their current score count is.